Welcome to Razzled, a podcast that takes award-winning worst films and fixes them. I'm your host, Jack Culbertson, and here to suffer alongside me, as always, is Joe Neelis. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, in honor of spooky season, we're going to go through the 31 days of Halloween of October. Uh, my partner, Belinda, gave me this image, this uh, picture that um, is like, hey, what's what's your favorite this and that? And... Um, it gave us an excuse to talk about Halloween. Yeah. Uh, we're going to put the image up on our social media so you can follow along and post whatever you like in comment sections or whatever. And, uh, yeah, we was wanted to do this because we kind of jumped right into recording the actual episode. <laughs> so there's not a real intro. So we want to do that here and also start things off with a quick content warning. Uh, just because we're talking about a lot of horror movies and whatnot, uh, specifically Hereditary and Evil Dead. There's some aspects of those movies that we want to put a content warning in front of. It could be traumatic. Yeah, for traumatic death, dismemberment, um, allusions to sexual assault, but not directly stated. Yeah. Things of that nature. Uh, overall, the conversation stays pretty tame in terms of the yeah. real content, but we know people are sensitive yeah. about that kind of stuff. Aside from cussing, it's pretty PG-13. Uh, there's a lot of fucking cussing, but you know us. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I hope... Everyone enjoys their Halloween season and uh, this episode. Yeah, have fun. Uh, my partner, Belinda, sent me this spooky season movie challenge calendar. I don't know who originally made it. I apologize. I would, I would love to credit you, but I don't know your name. Um, so Joe here is going to take us through the 31 days of Halloween. Yes, I've got it pulled up on my phone, so it's actually legible. Uh, well, we're going to do a little chit chat before we go into our, uh, our actual recording of Troll 2. Yes, for, which for is, <laughs> I'm excited and terrified to hear what happens with that. But, uh, yeah, we wanted to have a little bit of fun here. This is our favorite time of year. So we want to, you know, we want to share that with everybody and, uh, you know, dig into some of the, you know, some of the, some of the fun. Great. Joe, what's, um, what's day one look like? So, okay. Day one. The first horror movie you remember watching. This was really hard. I had a really hard time with this one. It was probably of the 31 questions, this is the one I didn't really know. Uh, so I wasn't allowed to really watch anything spooky or scary growing up. Um, like Jurassic Park was off limits. Uh, <laughs> when it first came out, it was like, what, 93 or something like that. Uh, so I had to really think back to what, what did I get away with? And TCM had a universal monsters marathon and I, I i was like off sick from school and caught the frankenstein one. Oh, excellent but like not frankenstein or bride of frankenstein the ones that are considered good but ghost of frankenstein uh which is ghost of frankenstein yeah i'm not familiar with this you don't need to be uh, <laughs> i don't really remember anything about it i think the one like after that is like frankenstein versus the wolfman so at least you have that um but and I did watch that one, but Ghost of Frankenstein was first, and it was just like it was like the B grade of a B grade movie. Like, like what's the plot line? I of this? no memory of it. It's they are all pretty much the same. Of like, evil doctor makes monster, t town gets pissed, <laughs> monster does naughty, monster dies, <laughs> monster does naughty. That yeah, doesn't that just kind of sum up the whole thing? Right? I mean, yeah, not not monster does naughty. That's the tagline for Frankenstein's new movie. Frankenstein, Viva Las Vegas. I was I was concerned we were going to get into another uh, <laughs> um, Bruce Willis discussion just because I can't hear <laughs> Frankenstein and not think of Tracy Morgan just uh, on the set of Cop Out now. Jesus but Christ. that's more of a me problem, I think. Uh, uh, so first one I can remember uh -huh. watching. I genuinely have no idea if there was anything before this because my mom was like, careful to like not let us watch stuff that was like super scary or like super inappropriate for kids like it, like she always made sure we had an HBO subscription because she loves watching you know movies and the shows that they put together but she was also like no we're not turning the channel on after a certain period of time right because H HBO used to be a little bit more risque back in the day oh yeah I mean yeah like, like with what with uh, real sex and whatnot back in the day like yeah there was a bunch of shit on there that you should not watch as a child or it's or in some cases an adult <laughs> but uh 
the I, first thing that I really remember watching in terms of horror was a double feature. Uh, I was at my dad's, and I remember watching with my stepbrother uh, the original Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween 2. Which I think that's the one that takes place primarily in a hospital. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that one... And it supposedly kills off Mike Myers and Dr. Loomis. Supposedly. And and then they try to do a third movie called Season, Season of, the Witch, of the Witch, which I I enjoy. I still haven't seen it. I've heard such bonkers dis- like descriptions of that movie, but I still have not seen it. It's kooky, but it's not it's not like Trolls too kooky. It's <laughs> nothing can. And be. like uh, I think Tom Atkins, who I think is a local ish actor. Wait, really? I, say. I think I think so. Hmm. Um, but he stars it anyway. It's it's great. And then people are like, well, "This isn't Mike Myers," and they're like, "Yeah, he di- he died." So then, but then they brought him back. Just for the kidding. Fourth one. <laughs> Both him and Doctor. They gave some like they gave Donald Pleasant some scar tissue, and he's like, "He's fine." They don't talk <laughs> about it beyond that. It's just like he's he's fine. fine. Um, so I, I I wasn't super strict with. I, so I did have two roles. The one I did away with immediately, which is like just one answer per question. Which <laughs> fuck that. Um, uh, well, <laughs> but the other one I did stick to was no repeats. No, and that was way harder. That's fair. Yeah, I, I, I could definitely understand not wanting to do any repeats. This is a long list. Of, this is like an entire the entire month of yeah. October, basically, for you to like talk about on social media and stuff. Like it's yeah, yeah. It that's hard to do. That's genuinely fucking hard to do on here. <laughs> especially whenever you get down to like, whenever it's down to like specific authors or filmmakers. Those like, ones were easy. Those were the easy ones. It was the broad ones that I was like. Oh, oh shit. Okay. okay. Um so the other movie I'm not sure if I saw that first was the original Night of Living Dead which ah. like had an effect on me. Not oh, I wasn't yeah. scared. I was just like this is really cool. Yeah. Um because I was used to just like straightforward Hollywood movies at that point. Well, it's an excellent goddamn movie. Like, it's great and it has a very raw feel to it because it was it was independent. Um and I love it. So day 2. Day 2. Uh horror sequel that you love. <laughs> I oh, we're we're doing great here, folks. I think I fucked up. Um, I thought there was one that was like sequels that are be- better than the original. Uh, day six is remake that is better than the original. Well, reading's real hard, folks. Uh, <laughs> so not that I, I mm. so I, I went with Dawn of the Dead, nineteen seventy eight. Okay, which I don't. I'm not saying is necessarily better than the original, but I love it. Um, and Hellraiser two. 1988 hellraiser 2 rules yes yeah. no i like i don't i don't know if i'd go so far as to say i like it better I than do. the first one but like really it's do. really good the i think we've mentioned this a couple of times now that for a previous podcast attempt we did a hellraiser specific episode yeah. uh and yeah the first two hellraisers are genuinely worth watching like if you have not done that and you enjoy horror w- treat yourself watch those this year the the depiction of hell in hellraiser 2 is so cool, so spooky, it is. very oh. eerie. I mean, it's Clive Barker. It's like peak Clive Barker. Yeah, it's like like oh god, it's so good. All right, what do we got for day three? Day three, great horror film with no sequels. There were a couple, but I used them elsewhere. Okay, so I went with Cabin in the Woods. Oh, Cabin in the Woods is great, which I, I do, I do love yeah. it. It's. It's such a good like send up of the yeah. uh, of the genre, while still just being rev- like like reverent and like respectful of the tropes and like the history of it. Like it's uh, it's it's extremely well done. It, I wouldn't recommend it to somebody who doesn't watch a lot of horror. I mean, mm-hmm. still probably be great, but if you have that background of having watched a lot of horror films, then you're gonna enjoy it a lot more. Like, yeah. You're gonna get all the references. Oh yeah, absolutely. And a very sharp. It's like funny as hell it's hilarious good uh, lord but also scary <laughs> there, you know there are points of it that are actually like pretty scary but like yeah. it's yeah it's but it's it's not like it, it's not going to make you lose sleep at night for how scary it is no it might be like oh you you're afraid of clowns well this 20 second clip will terrify the shit out of you you'll never look at unicorns the same again <laughs> uh I will say the the one thing though is that there was a lot of controversy around that movie. Because, really? Yeah. Supposedly, like uh, I don't I forget if it was specifically leveled at Joss Whedon or at Drew Goddard, but it was um, uh, suggested that this premise was stolen. Really? Yeah. Huh. Actually, I don't know if it came from another film or from a book. I don't know the specifics of that, but there were accusations of plagiarism leveled. Um, 
okay. for what that's worth. This was one of the film because I was a huge Joss Whedon fan back in the day. Yeah. Um, where I followed it from like its first announcement, where where it was just Joss Whedon being like, "Here's a title," and then for years I followed its development. Yep. Uh, and eventually, like it got put on the shelf, it wasn't released until Chris Helmsworth, who's in it, became <laughs> Thor, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna milk this Thor money." Um, so I. It's uh, a good decision. I mean, Chris Hemsworth rules. Right, so. <laughs> right, and he's great. He's great in that movie too. I, Chris Hemsworth is a legitimately like talented comedic actor. Yeah, like between that, uh, between Thor Ragnarok, between the, the 2016 Ghostbusters, like he he steals that fucking movie. That well, that last one in particular, like yeah. Like, I was actually really pleased. Uh, there's a YouTuber that Becca and I watch named Peter Brown. Like he's a okay. he's a maker. He does a lot of stuff with like resin and woodworking and whatnot. Okay, cool. Um, like you know one of those really satisfying wood turning channels. But he's also got like big dad energy. Cool. He's cool. he's great. Uh, and he had a friend on where they were trying to stabilize marshmallows, specifically like the promotional Stay Puffed marshmallows. Oh, okay. Uh, in resin, they were trying to stabilize them in resin for like to keep them. For longer, mm-hmm. uh, which is a fucking weird thing to do, and he mentions in the video, like you know, I, 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 like we they were talking about like how they got into Ghostbusters and how mm-hmm. like, you know he watched it when he was a kid and all that. And good good friend of the podcast, Aaron, uh, says his first movie was Critters. Ah, yes, sorry, I've never seen. <laughs> sorry, sorry, the, big, the comment just popped up and it completely yeah. derailed my train of thought there. Uh, yeah, so no, so Peter Brown um, is talking about how he f- how he got into Ghostbusters, and um, he mentions, uh, and then you know, and then I saw the 2016 mo- uh, movie, uh, and that I shouldn't say that I loved because apparently he really loved it. So I was oh, like, really? I'm really glad to hear that movie get some love because it doesn't deserve half of the hate that it gets. Like it's it's not a particularly good movie in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like I think it is str- it does struggle a lot in the writing department. S- the structure's pretty wonky. The structure's kind of wonky, but overall it's an enjoyable movie. I've heard that it's one of those films where the director's cut is worth watching. I would love to see that. If I could see a director's cut with like the goofy 3D shit taken out, uh-huh. that would be yeah. gold. Because like that was one of the things that I really disliked was the use of 3D in the movie. I don't think I saw the 3D version. The, that's the thing. Neither did I, but there's still shit oh, that like you comes can tell, out. Like, ah, yeah, there's yeah, shit yeah. that like comes out over the bo- over the widescreen bars and stuff. It's like, that's disorienting. I That is really weird. Yeah. Um, I've been watching through Friday the 13th for this Halloween. I pick like a franchise every year. Okay. Yeah. And I finally got to the third one, which is where Jason puts on the mask for the first time. I was, right, I was right. super excited. I hated it. Really? Specifically because it was made for 3D back was in it? like 1983, 4, something like that. Oh, that's wild. And it's like the worst. It's the, the most egregious of those things where it's like, here's the thing coming right at the screen. Oh, and I'm like, I, I'm st- it's, I mean, yeah, I'm taken out of it. I guess that's the point. But like, I'm not yeah. wearing 3D glasses. Um. And to Aaron's point here, yeah. Critters, uh, it's actually reminding me of another YouTube thing. Uh, there's a, a YouTube channel called Scaredy Cats. Okay. Uh, uh, and they uh, uh, they went through all of the Critters movies in uh, in sequence. Okay. And it's wild how that series falls apart. <laughs> I've uh, Maybe that'll be next year. I'll do the Critters franchise. Uh, day four. Day four. Yeah. Right. We're doing a thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite horror TV series. I there's another one where I struggled because I oh actually real quick my favorite with a uh, horror movie with no sequels is probably it follows that's good it's a good one I need to rewatch that it's one. so good I haven't watched it in a few years but it's so good I watched it on, like a really tiny screen so I'm like oh I, damn I, think I like it yeah no you got you want to watch it on a bigger screen but yeah go on TV series horror TV series so I don't know if this counts but the original Twilight Zone, which ran from 1959 to 1964. I think that counts. I think between... it gave me nightmares as a kid, so yeah. I think it should count. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's. I think that's a solid baseline for like. Yeah. Does this count as horror? There's a couple of episodes from that series that have influenced everything I've written. Um, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there's there's one. It's like the Martians have landed on Maple Street. That's not the title. And it's something like that. Um, where. It's this one street in like a s- suburb where like a kid goes missing and like the electronics all go out and people are like freaking out and they, they start to like blame each other for like what's going on. Okay. Um, Interesting. And like if you don't know the twist, cause it's, it's very good. It still holds up really well. Um, close your close your ear holes for the next like 10 <laughs> seconds. But the 
there are two aliens like on the mountain ridge that are just like turning the electricity on and off to see what like people will do. And they're like, okay, yeah, humans suck. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. that I thought that was the twist of that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah that, that fucking rules. I love um, it. <laughs> but that it, it played on like Cold War. Uh, oh yeah, hysteria. Yeah, paranoia. Yeah, yeah. and I I'm like, well, that's that's an American curse. It's not knife breaker. <laughs> it's oddly enough not a knife breaker. No, no, uh, <laughs> not yet. I would love to do like a Cold War era. Oh my god. Oh, so good. Um, <laughs> and then like every short story I've written has that. Is that an Alko She? There's some of that in Alko She. Nah, that just deals with family sucking. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a good TV series. I, I, I horror yeah. TV wasn't really my thing. Uh, growing up, I was way too into cartoons mm-hmm. and uh, it was random nonsense. Uh, I, I, I negated Tales from the Crypt just because there's a question later. There on is about a specific it. question about it later. Uh, um, there's like American Horror Story, which I never got into. Yeah, I watched a little bit of that and just it didn't click with me. Um, I did watch. Was it The Haunting of Hill House? Is that it? Yeah, the, and, then, like, and like this the and then the Bly Manor sequel. Mike, is Mike that right? Flanagan. Yeah, yeah. I, I did have, like the first. Uh, I know season, tons I guess. of people that love those, but I still haven't mm-hmm. sat down and watched them. Maybe that's something I'll have to do in, if I if I have any time yeah. off here. It's very dry. Um, I have heard that. Yeah, like yeah. The, the, I tried to watch it twice. The first time I watched it, I was expecting like a horror horror movie, mm-hmm. and like I am bored. But then the second time I watched <laughs> it, and I watched it like to enjoy the whole story. It's very yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Does Invincible count? <laughs> Does that count as horror? <laughs> Just from the three clips I've seen, yes. Okay. <laughs> I guess there's Walking that, Dead, but that, that kind of went off the rails. Walking Dead, I, you know what? I might have to say Walking yeah. Dead, actually, because uh, like the only things I can think of as a kid are Tales from the Crypt, which, mm-hmm. again, I was not allowed to really watch, and Goosebumps, which... I wasn't allowed to watch Goosebumps. <laughs> see, my mom let me watch Goosebumps, uh-huh. so I read, I read voraciously. I read Goosebumps as a kid. Like, I my remember, little sister watched it, but my, you know, the, the youngest sister, the youngest sibling always gets, like, eased up a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We, we didn't really have that issue no. in my house. There's no. a big age gap. There's, there, that's yeah. true. You have a bigger age gap with your sister. Um, but yeah, like Walking Dead's. Yeah. Things. Well, I think with, with, like with Goosebumps, like I enjoyed them for what they mm-hmm. were. But even as a kid, I was like, these suck as adaptations of the books. Uh, somebody is asking. Oh, does are you are you afraid of the dark count? Of course, are you afraid yeah. of the dark counts? Man, I yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, I've only watched a yeah. handful of episodes. How did I forget but... that? I'm ashamed of myself. No, the obvious answer is it was is, like, "Are you afraid of the dark?" Goosebumps for big kids. Yeah, kinda. Right? It, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just sc- scary stories with a with like a uh, a friendship framing device. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, oh my god, that pinball episode. I need, you know I should go back and watch those because yeah. I only watched like three or four because I was because my mom was was easily scared by scary things. Mm-hmm. Um, I just didn't watch that shit until I got to college and yeah. I, I was doing research for a film I was working on and I was like, there's an entire genre of awesome that I've been missing out on. <gasps> yeah. Uh, there's a, there's an anecdote that I'll share later about my mom and like specifically the movie <laughs> that scared her as a child. Nice. Uh, day five. Uh, day five. Uh, favorite horror score. Uh, another one was hard. Um, I was thinking about the first Suspiria. But uh, mm. they're they're scored by Goblin, um, <laughs> which is really cool. But I I ultimately N- N- went Nilbog. It, it, it scored by Nilbog. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Philip Glass and I think he's like a four string orchestra. Or something. I can't remember. He did a score for the um nineteen. I don't know. It was it's the Bela Lugosi Dracula. Oh okay. Um, it's great. It's super cool. Nice. Yeah, I don't have an answer for this. <laughs> Just, um, yeah. There's like, yeah, it was a little hard. Um, yeah, that, that's. I feel like that's one where you have to like really intentionally sit down and yeah. like go over some of the music yourself and like the, like be actively like watching some of the films like kind of yeah. gauge. Well, you know what like, I would say if it counted, it doesn't. Is the Castlevania score like any given Castlevania oh, man. game? Like any of those. No, I mean the music in those games yeah. is absolutely fantastic. I, oh, God. So day f- f- six. Here we go. Now this is a remake that is better than the original. Yes. Um, this is a, this, is a, this is a controversial one. Yeah, I went with the Ring. Uh, 2002's The Ring. 
Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that one scared the shit out of me. Yeah. I have, I've never seen the original. The original, the, the, the Japanese original. Mm-hmm. When did that come out? Uh, a couple of years before that. So like 2000? I think l- either late 90s. I think late, okay. late 90s. That feels like a more realistic turnaround for something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah, I've never seen the original, but God did the... the they are uh... very similar. The <laughs> The biggest difference being that in the American version... Uh, and I think it's Naomi Watts is kind of the lead, right? Like she's trying to figure out the mystery before her son is r- ringed. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, in the Japanese version, it's the father who is trying to get oh. the unringed, but okay. it doesn't work as well because the, in, in the in the film in the story, the mother and father are separate separated, right? Yeah, and the the kid lives with the mother. So the father's kind of like, he's there, but not as big of a role in the child's life. Mm -hmm. So you're not as invested in him saving the kid. Whereas like in the American version, the mother is, it's her child. I guess that, I don't know. I feel like there's a couple of different ways you can look at that. Because on the one hand, it could be, like you could read it as the dad's more distant from the kid's life. Or you can read it as a... Like an amplification of the father's struggle to be more present in his in his that would have been cool, but that's not how. But that's not how it (laughs) works. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, again, it's still still worth watching. Yeah, again, I have not seen that version, so I have no idea. But and also, I think Hans Zimmer did the score for the American version, which I mean, I genuinely can't remember. But God, is he good? Yeah. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't wait to hear. I feel like I I've said this in several episodes uh, regarding regarding several things, but I can't wait to hear what he does with Dune. Oh yeah, I still haven't seen it. I need, there's like six movies in theaters for once that I I, I know. need to see. Woof. All right. Uh, day seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite horror comedy. Ooh, this was so I used Cabin in the Woods earlier, so that right. I could, so you can't use that again. Yeah. Uh, which it, again, damn good choice. Right. Um. And this one is very much like comedy and horror, which mm-hmm. is important to me. Yes. It's like Dale. And Tucker versus oh Tucker and Dale versus Evil yeah it's not what I picked oh man that's, because that's probably what I would pick it's it's more comedy than it is horror I wanted like an yeah. even split uh, so I went with but Alan Tudyk man oh Alan Tudyk's great <laughs> he should be in everything um we need to clone Alan Tudyk he went to Juilliard <laughs> he went to Juilliard um Return of the Living Dead uh 1986 oh man <laughs> yeah I love this movie so much I. I remember when we watched that and I was just like, what the fuck is happening? I my my friend Matt, who's a huge horror fan, recommended it to me and I'm like, how did I miss this? It, it's wild. Just I, the <laughs> would he be a mortician, I guess? I don't know. He's a guy who does like the embalming. And, yeah, I would say yeah, it was like, like yeah, mortician's probably yeah. a fair um or well. I don't know if there's a separate coroner? name for, maybe coroner. Maybe yeah. coroner. Yeah. Yeah. Mortician has more to do with like the, the, the people. Actual, uh, yeah. Mortician's more active in like the actual like burial right. or, the you know. Funerals. Yeah. Part, yeah. Um, every single character in that movie, no matter how small, is their own kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. No, the characters are absolutely fucking wild. Um, that same, actually, that Scaredy Cats channel that I mentioned yeah. just did a video uh, on Return of the Living Dead recently, and it's excellent. I would highly recommend checking that out. I mean, just watch that whole channel. It's so, it's very fun. The I watched Friday the Thirteenth Part Five last night for the first time, and the dude who's in Return of the Living Dead, he's like one of the punks. Um, oh, okay. He he has like soul glow in his hair. Um, <laughs> basically, like left that set. This isn't true, but he it basically it looks like he like left that set, walked across the street to Friday the Thirteenth Part. <laughs> part five <laughs> so and just re- recorded that it's like the <laughs> same kind of get up the same like look and feel um same acting <laughs> that's outstanding so he's been typecast is what yeah I'm yeah i want to see if he's been in other horror stuff because i know um that guy walked out of a touring van and just like <laughs> right, some random right. punk band just started doing horror movies uh <laughs> all right all right Day eight. Day eight. Uh, favorite Stephen King book? This was so hard. I have yet to actually read any Stephen King books, which is a shame. I've read I know. a shit ton. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're, you're picking up my slack. I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't pick one. I picked three. I picked okay. three because I picked one from each of his eras. 
Okay. Okay. So, so what, let's define the eras. We've so got... there's drugs. Drugs. <laughs> yes. There's post drugs. Post drugs or, and uh, then there's car accident. Car. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, back on drugs. Different drugs though. The the painkillers. And then there's post painkillers. Because he got he got back he got sure off drugs again. okay so there's so, four technically but I I skipped the um car crash narcotics addiction okay so you're period. just doing drugs post drugs and post painkillers yeah because okay. that time period is nah. gotcha okay. um like the first book he did after his his accident was um Dreamcatcher I knew you were gonna say that uh, which yeah. I hate so I, I know much. you you you've told me quite a few times about your yeah. just your distaste for Dreamcatcher and like I'm nothing against him like he was he was an incredible pain he didn't think he was ever gonna write again like I I get it uh so for for early King um it okay I love the kids and their friendship it's like all the parts with them just like hanging on being kids great oh yeah there's also a clown uh <laughs> Then there's um, I I lied I think it took two from his final period. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Revival. Which I'm not is, familiar with Revival. No, and they were gonna make I think Mike Flanagan was gonna make a movie about it, and then it got shut down, or he he moved on to a different project, which is a bummer because it's really cool. Um, one of the like Stephen King endings that like legitimately freaked me out. Uh, but it's about like a revival church. Oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, it, I mean that's naturally where my brain went. Yeah. And it's about like this little kid who went to church, uh, this one church and like their relationship with the priest. And then something awful happens to the priest and then he quits the religion. And then it kind of like it's about their interactions throughout their lives. OK, it's really cool. Yeah, um, that's fascinating. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check that out. Yeah, That one. I, I want to reread that one. And then his most recent book, actually, Billy Summer, is phenomenal. Really? Yeah. Like a lot of his books in the last maybe like 10 years, I've been like, well, that was enjoyable. It wasn't earth shattering. But Billy Summers, like from start to finish, I was blown away. You know, it's so wild just to think about how long he's been at it and yeah. how prolific he is. It is absurd. Like I remember that Simpsons joke where there like or there's a publisher asking him about his next book and he's just like looking around the room he's like it's a lamp monster. <laughs> yeah. Ah! yeah. And the publisher's just like oh, all right. <laughs> when can I have it? <laughs> just like to think that he almost stopped writing. It, so and to think, see yeah. what his career is. Like yeah. it continues to be. And he is has staggering. He pretty much releases one novel every other year, and then in his off years, he releases a collection of short stories. Can can we get him to like kick George R. R. Martin like right he, in the ass? There's an, uh, not an interview. There's like a they're both on stage for something, and George R. R. Martin's like, "How do you do it?" <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Like, please look it up on YouTube. Like George R. 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 Martin, Stephen King. I absolutely will do that and later. That's, that's I'm talking. It's beautiful. Brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, like no, like I and, and for the record, I love George R. R. Martin, but like, has he been sci-fi? Because I don't really. He care. has. He, okay. yeah, well, he he's. I think he's he's mostly edited sci-fi. He has a um. Oh, okay. He has a, a like a series that he curates and edits called um, uh, Wild Cards. I believe where it's mostly other authors who write these sci-fi stories in this world he's put together or this universe he's putting together, but he's done some work in that universe as well. I'm pretty sure. Cool. And I think there's some TV adaptations of that. I'm not a hundred percent, or maybe that was something that was in the works is maybe didn't come to fruition just yet. Cause I mean, he's I so busy I, with I've HBO. Heard of that. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of sword and sorcery for the most part. Yeah. Um, but I've heard nothing but good things about his writing other than he takes forever to write. Which yeah, yeah. There, I mean there are some legitimate. I've got like to four have. novels in in the works. Yeah, so that's I, I, I'm <laughs> no shade. Day nine. Day nine. Um, day nine. We've got favorite Stephen King movie or miniseries. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the reason I had to pick three movies was because I couldn't reuse this. Oh, um, okay. Uh, the Stand. Oh yeah, I I. Love yeah, I still, that need, I, still need, I still need to watch that. I, I'm, I've I'm so stupidly behind on my Stephen King. <laughs> I've read the book. I've read the comic book adaptation. I've watched the miniseries. I do need to see the newest one, but I've heard kind of mixed mixed things about it. Yeah, so have I. Um, but I, I, 
I love it. Uh, Gary Sinise, Sinise, whatever. Sinise, yeah. Sinise. Uh, Molly Ringwald. It's Molly Ringwald, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, day 10. Uh, favorite psychological horror. Okay. I picked two not because I couldn't decide, but because I wasn't sure if it was a horror movie. Um, I think it's personally like a psychological thriller. Mm-hmm. Uh, but seven, some people consider seven to be a horror film. I don't. I would say thriller. Yeah. yeah. I, I I think yeah, I think horror might be a little bit of a stretch for that one. Yes. So I I wrote that one down just because it's like why it's like top five oh, for me. Geez. Um, but I also wrote down Perfect Blue, which is an anime movie. Um, I'm blanking on the guy's name, and I feel bad because he passed away not too long ago. Oh, um, but he did. He's famous for like Paprika, um, Millennium Actress, um. The Perfect Blue. He did a, a shorter series called um, Oh shit. I think Paranoia Agent. Um, the the movie Black Swan bought the rights. To the, the the director Darren Aronofsky bought the rights to Perfect Blue because there's so much overlap in plot. Um, Perfect Blue is about an actress, or well, a, a pop star who becomes an actress, and like the weight of the. Are you saying the director of this? Yeah, it's like, uh, it's, go ahead. Uh, Toshiki Sato. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. All of his stuff is great. And it, it's beautiful. Um, I think he's only done those three or four projects. Um, oh, I watched this and Eraserhead back to back. And I was like, I am deeply uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> but like, f- utterly fascinated. Uh they're they're both terrifying in their own way. I've only seen Eraserhead once, and even then, I was like also like s- slow cooking a pot of pasta sauce at the time. <laughs> so like I was running back and forth between the uh-huh. kitchen and the TV. So I missed a lot. I didn't retain yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's another thing I need to go back and actually rewatch. You should watch it in your apartment late at night when nobody else is home. You'll yeah, s- seems, send the cats out too. That seems. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I mean. I don't know. They piss in all their luggage. I don't know if I could steam clean <laughs> that fat soon enough for the holiday season. Yeah, keep that piss smell. That'll work for the film. Um, I... We'll smell a vision. So much piss. Day 11. Day 11. Okay, let me navigate back here. There we go. Day 11. Uh, movie that scared you as a kid. I forgot. I, I wrote this like a week ago, so I don't remember most of my own answers. Um, <laughs> Fucking E.T. the extra- Extraterrestrial. You were not the only person I know that uh, that experienced this as a kid. Like, I Scared loved E.T. as a kid. Our friend, our friend Jamie also okay. like, can't stand uh, E.T. <laughs> um, like, he had the same experience as a kid. I I don't get it. I loved E.T. as a kid. I thought, I thought it was great. I don't like the puppet design. Fair. I love the spaceship design. The spaceship design spaceship is super design cool. sick, yeah. Um, he... The uh, spoilers for E.T. E.T. fucking dies. He doesn't almost die. He doesn't die, but not really. He fucking no, dies. He, yeah, that's true. He does just flat out die at one point of that movie. Yeah, and they they sell it. It's not like dead for like a second. Then they bring him back. He's like dead. Dead. Because uh, I rewatched a couple of years ago when when Stranger Things first came out, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna watch movies that like inspired this. Sure, because that was I mean that was a very clear influence in yeah. season one in particular. <laughs> and like. As an adult, I'm like, this is still very sad. Um, so thank you, E.T. That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to think what scared me as a kid. There's um, a Treehouse of Horror one that I'm going to talk about later that <laughs> gave me nightmares. <laughs> See, most of the things that scare me are like TV shows. I didn't watch too many movies. Yeah. Um, shit. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I'm. I know you're, we're not supposed to be reusing, but I think you sure. know, Freddy Krueger probably. Yeah. Just, yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, I think, was probably like the one that really scared me the most as a kid. I didn't see that until I was like sophomore in college. So I was like, this is fun. I'm enjoying this, but I'm not yeah. scared. I think the thing that like one of the things that freaked me out the most and also like it like immediately sparked me is like that was so cool was yeah. like Johnny Depp being sucked into oh, the yeah. bed and then vo- like like blood volcanoed yeah. out onto the ceiling. Just That's, There's some really cool deaths in the nightmare on Elm Street series. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, and incredibly inventive uh and skilled uh effects departments yes. on the on those films just mwah. um the one that got me was I think it's the first movie where she's running upstairs but her feet are sinking into the steps. Oh man. That one, that one's rough. <laughs> um 
don't, don't listen to mom. So this one time I tried salvia. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing happened to me, but I was on a couch. I'm like, well, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> Day 12. Favorite body horror? Oh, I'm just looking at the answer and I'm like, must be day favorite Cronenberg. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's, but yeah. that's a fair shorthand. Yeah. Uh, so I, I went with three because there's like three oh, specific Real quick, moments. Aaron brought up Pet Cemetery, scared the hell out of him as a kid. That's fair. I've heard a couple people say that, yeah. especially the, the ankle bit. I didn't see it until I was like a late in my late teens, I think. So it didn't hit me quite as hard. But yeah, if I saw that as a kid, it would have fucked me up. I watched like three years ago, so I was like, that was uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. I'm scared. Uh, but yeah, so what's, what, what are you Cronenberging? So <laughs> I picked three because there's three scenes, three separate scenes. I'm like, this is fucking cool. Uh -huh. um, the first one is Existence. Uh, I still haven't seen that. Not a whole lot of people have seen it. It's, it's my first Cronenberg, <laughs> so it'll always hold a weird oh, wow. place uh, in my heart. Okay. Weird, tumorous place. Um, there's a scene where Jude Law is I'm not gonna explain the whole film because like ooh, um, fair but it makes sense in the film he's eating this like lizard and he feels compelled to start putting the lizard bones like connect them and he creates a gun out of the bones and he like <laughs> oh, takes no. um like a bridge like a, a teeth bridge out of his mouth and like uses it as ammunition sure uh wow yeah out of context that that's real weird um it's super in gross. In context, that's real weird. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Um, oh. uh, there's also um, Naked Lunch, which I've also still never seen. I, I there's some weird stuff with his typewriter that he does. Okay, um, it's like half bug, half lady bit, half typewriter, as one does. Uh, and then the last one's Videodrome, um, just because of all the shit with the TVs. Super cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I've not seen that whole movie, uh -huh. but I've seen that scene. Yeah. And that is wild. And I think there's a moment, I could, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I think there's a moment where, um, I think James Woods is the lead, reaches into his chest and like pulls out a gun. Because. Uh, no, that's just what James Woods oh, does. Oh, that's just James, yeah, that's no, where he keeps he, his gun. He, he keeps, yeah. <laughs> you no, know, James Woods, uh, much, much like the, uh, much like the the uh, stormtrooper analogs in uh, the podcast Mission to Zix, just is biologically engineered right. to hide guns within him. Except he doesn't have a butt gun; it's a chest gun. He's, he's already got yeah. a stick up his ass, so <laughs> there's no more room. Uh, day. Uh, real quick, sure. uh, in terms of body horror, I, yeah. I don't know that I have a film that is my favorite in, for for body horror specifically. But the first thing that jumps to my mind when I think of body horror is the music video for the song "Matter Red" by Yaysayer. It features it's a video. First off, it's a music video starring Kristen Bell. Okay. And second off, she is like caring for this strange like skin cube of a monster thing that is like her I don't know her rom romantic partner of some sort and is uh -huh. clearly dying throughout the entire video it's disturbing <laughs> um that is that is uh if i'm not mistaken from the from taken from their second album where they basically just went to new zealand and like took a bunch of acid as they were recording or, as, right, as you do in new yeah. zealand uh this is also one i don't consider to be a, a horror film but like akira's body horror is oh sure whoa. oh yeah no that's a lot um amazing amazing film Day 13. Day 13. Uh, 13, uh, most unique movie kill. Oh, yep. No, that makes sense. <laughs> I was like, hereditary? Why? Oh, oh right. Oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> oh, my God. I saw uh, that. Now, are you, now is, is this Tony Collette sawing off her own head? Is this? No, it's early in the film. It, uh, it, I, I, I was it. hoping right. it wasn't. God. Um, uh, ear earmuffs if yeah. you haven't seen them. it's very good you should watch it it's a great movie and um, god damn is it harrowing the little sister is having an allergic reaction to i think like peanuts or something uh -huh. and is sticking her head outside of the van because she can't breathe and uh her brother who's like really i think he's high or drunk i forget the um, i forget the circumstances that he's but under. mr dave dev patel dave patterson <laughs> it's not dave patel <laughs> it's not no, no we've had this conversation it's not dev patel. but i want it to be um <laughs> not not dev patel is <laughs> driving a little too close to the, the edge of the road and his sister's head gets knocked off by the telephone pole and it's the, the way it's shot is the worst 
Um, oh my god. Yeah, it's like oh. you Alex Wolf. His name is Alex Wolf. Sorry, Alex Wolf. I'm sorry. <laughs> you did great in that film, by the way. Uh I saw that movie in theaters. I cannot imagine seeing that happen on the and big I, screen. I, I, I like I watched it way after its actual release and like seeing that on a television was hard enough. Like, I, I saw it with my friend Rob. And like it's maybe the first uh, like 20 25 minutes in. It's not super far into the film. It was with Rob Hockenberry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God. And like we're both watching it and like the movie's okay up to that point. Like it's it's a little slow. Um you don't know what's going on. I mean you don't know what's going on until the end of the film. Even then, not so much. And you could feel half the audience was like I'm checked out yeah it was like that i'm yeah check please i'm done <laughs> and then the other half of the audience like leaned in like i'm in tell me more <laughs> uh i'm like that is not something i've seen before there's also really quick um there's a kill i think it's in city of the living dead it's an italian film yeah, i'm not think, familiar with this full, full G. um there's like an evil priest and he makes this like this couple's like making out this like teens are making out in their car and he's like i'm eviling you and she starts to throw up her own intestines and stomach oh no it's uh i think i was like eating at the time i was like well yep, i'm done yeah no you, you put away your low main yeah <laughs> just that is <laughs> and you can tell that like the actress had to put like just probably like pig intestine in her mouth and just go oh, oh god um and it it was effective uh day 14 day 14 uh favorite halloween television special oh yeah there was just one I used to watch as a kid called uh, The Halloween Tree, which is a Ray, Bur- Ray Bradbury story. Oh, yeah. I'm not familiar with this. It's You can't find it anywhere. Really? Yeah. I think I've I've recently watched on YouTube with like the lowest quality, uh, but it's it's these like four kids are going out trick-or-treating and they go to meet their one friend and they see like an, an ambulance drive away and they find out that he has like appendix burst. Huh. Um, but... They're like, wait a minute, there he is over there. And it's his ghost. And they're trying to catch him. Um, and it it's a little like edutainment because they, they chase him around the world. They they get Leonard Nimoy as the Crypt Keeper. But that's not even a joke. I mean, it, he's not the Crypt Keeper, but he might as well be. He's like that narrator kind of device. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, he like gives them the ability to chase after their friend and they get taken around the world to different to experience different Halloween traditions. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, that's that's kind of wild. And spoilers for this, it ends with them uh, at the uh, Deus Still Mortes. I'm not saying that right, but um, they each make a deal to save their friend's life by giving up a portion of their own. They take like a bite of like a sugar skull. Oh, sure. Um, it's super cool. Uh, I'm actually I'm gonna go with Aaron. Uh, my favorite is probably also the uh, Charlie Brown Halloween, uh, the 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 great the pumpkin. great pumpkin. Yeah, I I, I just always love it. I yeah. the story's cool. I love the animation for that episode. Yeah, I mean the, the animation of that era in general for the penis was great. It's just it's it's an iconic look. Like you you can never you will never ever mistake the peanuts animation for anything else. Like it it is it stands on its own in such a great way. I think there's like one ghost that has like little eye holes all over the fucking if i remember (laughs) correctly yeah (laughs) what artist was sitting like "Mm, (laughs) um i'm gonna make this look as tattered as possible oops all eyes (laughs) every damn time uh number 15 favorite song about murder oh god um have you ever heard the jarvis cocker song i will kill again Maybe I think you've made I've me probably... listen to this once or twice in the past. Like, I don't know if we like I, it, like so when we when we're like in pre production for ramming speed, we will have production meetings, and we always start off by listening to a song. And I'm not sure if that was one of them. That seems like something I would do. It seems like something you would do. Like, I, I, it was definitely it definitely wasn't a time that Scott picked the song. No. Um... No, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I have that. That I'm like ninety percent sure that this happened. Like Jarvis Cocker starts singing. It's just like very. If you're not listening to the lyrics, you're like this is nice. This is like nice, calm song. But what he's singing about is like I'm gonna go do my groceries and take care of my family, and then after that, I'm gonna murder some people again, again. Yeah, it's great. Um, so mine, I would say. <laughs> 
I don't know that I necessarily have a favorite song about murder specifically, but there was a band called Ice Nine Kills uh, that I've gotten into in the past couple of years. You probably wouldn't enjoy them. They're very much like like uh, like mid two thousands like emo screamo no, like no, metal no, kind no, of I shit. Definitely not like them. No, but they they have an entire album called The Silver Scream. Uh, where each song is inspired by a horror movie, mm-hmm. uh, and the like, the very last track is called "It Is the End," okay. and sure enough, it's all about it. It's and uh, oh, Pennywise, like Pennywise, okay. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the lyrics are all just like reference. Like it's like it's kind yeah. of cheesy as hell. Like the way they adapt, like the like the the ideas into the uh, into the song, but like it's just. It's really fast and really hard, and they're uh, and they brought in the uh, the brass section from Less Than Jake to uh, to like participate in this. So there's these blaring horns throughout parts of it. I'm gonna hate this, but I want to listen. Yeah, no, I'll play it for you after we're done here. But yeah, it's it's fun. We got uh, oh hell yeah, Warren Zevon, uh, Excitable Boy. Okay, uh, Warren Zevon. That, that's Matt's suggestion. Matt, the horror fan. The oh, one, the one who informed very, me about um, Return of Living Dead. Very nice. I, have, I don't. Maybe I know that one to hear it. I don't know off the top of my head, but uh, I'll listen to that as like a cleanser to whatever that is that you just recommended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I think yeah, Warren no, Zevon's a little bit more more your speed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, and I love me some Warren Zevon. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> just my, I also have horrible taste in general. So uh, we'll have to do like an all music episode where I, I just sit back <laughs> and like just talking because I don't know shit. <laughs> you want to talk about some Zeppelin? Uh, I mean, I like I like some Zeppelin. We'll talk about some Zeppelin. Getting some. I'll hobbits. talk for that like five minutes, and then oh my well, god, I just about love and longing and hobbits and, and hobbits. <laughs> I just finished uh, Elvira's. I swear this relates. I just finished sure Elvira's um, autobiography. Nice, uh, or Cassandra Peterson's autobiography. Yeah, called, yeah. Um, and in it, she talks about she was a groupie. Right, I, I, yeah. I know that is part of her backstory there. And like the first penis that she encounters is Jimmy Page's. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Dang. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I forget what band he was a part of before Zeppelin. Um, oh, this is pre Zeppelin. This is pre Zeppelin. How old was she at this point? D- not old enough to yeah. see a penis. <laughs> I mean, sure. That's. I mean, that. It, um, she. It's vague, but it's somewhere between like fourteen and. Yeah. I'm a lot of them were. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Everyone we love from that era sucks. As a classic rock fan, it's like really hard to talk about them during the that period because it's like, well, that was all very illegal. Yeah. Um, But she she was a virgin, and um, after she saw his Jimmy Page's rocket, uh, Uh I was like, I'm a virgin, and like ran out of the room. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Good for good for you, Cassandra. That's the that's a good response. Oh my god. It's a very good book. It's very it, – it's sad, but it's it's very good. The Yardbirds. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Jimmy Page is – the band Jimmy Page ah, is Ah, OK. Yeah, I, I would not have known that. Thank you. I, I learned something today. I was familiar with the Yardbirds. I didn't know that he was in it at any given point. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but, but, oh, oh, here we go. All right. Next, uh, next question, 16. Favorite Halloween costume you have worn? This may be not my favorite, but it's the one that has a story behind it. Um, I made my own Halloween costume my senior year of high school. Nice. Uh, that I named The Creeper. Um, <laughs> and I made it out of coat hangers, wire coat hangers, and black electrical tape. And then I, there's probably a name for the like the metal drain in your tub that has like the holes, the perforated holes. A drain. A drain. <laughs> I, I just took – I made that for like the mouth. Oh, oh, uh, with like oh, a okay. leather coat, uh, a like trench coat, and um, I think I took like part of a windshield wiper for like a like a hook arm. I made my own character. Yeah, sure. Um, and then I probably look like a mixture of like Dark Man and oh, man. like a World War One <laughs> German soldier. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> and that's how I met my girlfriend's parents. <laughs> <laughs> and wouldn't you know that one didn't work out? Huh? Yeah. Who the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> very like not far right, but like conservative. <laughs> I mean, this lovely is Al- couple, this is Altoona. So this is Patton, so it's even it more right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. <laughs> uh, I think my fa- oh, my favorite costume. I think um, 
I always look back fondly on the homemade Power Rangers that yeah. my like my best friend at the time and I went as. Like his mom made these great uh costumes for us that like had like had like the right size like diamond things on the chest and everything yeah, and were yeah. like full body like one piece suits that we wore. But she didn't make masks, so I made us masks oh, okay. out of construction paper. And I was nice. really proud of them. And then it rained. I was just like, well, that was probably good right up until <laughs> yeah, no, they did not last. So people were like, Well, you walking around in your pajamas? I'm like, no, give me candy. I'm a power ranger. I'm a power what, ranger. What, what uh ranger were you? I was the green ranger. Yeah. He was cool. And I, I watched I love, maybe like four episodes. I was but. super into the first season. And then mm-hmm. like after the White Ranger arc, I fell off and, yeah. or aged out, I guess. I don't know. And then I remember hearing they did dinosaurs and shit down the road. And, nice. and it's like this. This got kind of wild. Uh, yes. Yeah, I had friends that would watch it. And I'm like, you're doing like geometric shapes now. You run a little <laughs> low on ideas there. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. I've just never seen it. Power um, Rangers meets Flatland. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh. How many of our listeners do you think understood that reference? Oh, I was ba- I barely got it myself. <laughs> Just I took math for stoners. Um, <laughs> that's they exactly talk about Flatland. And they math talk about Flatland. Stoners. Yeah, because I couldn't pass math in undergrad, so they're like, "Take take this one, this summer class." I'm like, "Okay." It's, this has a very like Patton Oswalt physics for poets kind of vibe. <laughs> Just in like either. Everyone was either drunk or high, including the friends that I went to class with, except for me, because I'm like, I suck at math. I need to be completely stone sober. Yep. And he talked about, I think it was Donald Duck and Mathland, which is fantastic, and Flatland, um, which I've then then went and read. It's that's a fun shorts book. It's, like, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like like what's well, like eighty pages or it's something. A very short, after, yeah, yeah, like it's it's a good read. <laughs> it is, you know, not literary genius by any stretch no, of the imagination, but it's enjoyable. It's yeah, mo- moving on. Moving on. <laughs> um, favorite John Carpenter. This was beyond easy. Yeah, it's not it's even. A, it's a slam dunk choice, right? Like what? The thing. The thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people would be like, "Well, Halloween, right?" I'm like, "No, the thing." I mean, Halloween rules, but the thing. The thing isn't even the thing. My favorite John Carpenter movie. It's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, it's top five. No, it's a fucking masterpiece. Like. Uh, I just got my Kurt Russell action figure like four days ago. Yeah, that's why I didn't bring this up in terms of the body horror because yeah. I knew this was oh, going to yeah. come up now. <laughs> like, For sure. I I have no uh, – the only thing that made me upset about that movie was when it ended. I'm like, I want more. Yeah. No, I want, I want more. I want more. <laughs> um, bring it back. John Carpenter has a lot of other enjoyable films. I mean, he's, like, an, that amazing, one is, he's an amazing filmmaker. It's I really want to be a smart ass me like, oh, The Invisible Man with Chevy Chase. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, but I've never seen it, so I don't even want to – I. I don't think I want to. It's considered just, pretty bad. I'm just, I, we, I mean, we spent so much time railing against Chevy Chase in the nothing but trouble for uh, uh, yeah. episode. It's just like I'm Chevy Chased out right now. Yeah, I can't do I, it. Maybe next Halloween we can we can watch. I do we'll eventually relitigate some more Chevy Chase every Halloween. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, horror movie released the year you were born. It was a good year for her, for movies the year I was born. I got... 80, 87, right? Yeah. I got Evil Dead 2. Okay. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, which is, the, I think, the Dream Warriors. I think. Yeah. I'm not 100% I think, sure. I think 4 is Dream Master. But anyway, it's the one that has Freddy with, like, the syringe fingers. Which, <laughs> okay. Um, And Hellraiser also came out that year. Oh, Hellraiser? Yeah. One? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Also, Batman Year One. Really? It's not a horror film. I just like to say that. I say the, the, yeah. com- the comic yeah. came out that year. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Um, I don't know what I don't know what horror movies came out in '86. Hold on. Um, I'm trying to think of what else happened in uh, the, the third Nightmare on Elm Street was actually the first one that I saw. <laughs> Troll came out in 1986. <laughs> Troll the singular. <laughs> yeah. Um. Nice. The Fly, Critters, Critters Great. coming ba- coming back around again. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Six, which I'll be watching tonight. Poltergeist Two, never seen that one. Uh, there's yeah, there's some okay. interesting yeah. ones here. I mean, eighties okay. were a good era for for horror. It's really like them nineties babies that had to suffer through some shit. Yeah. 
Um, oh man, Chopping Mall. I haven't seen Chopping Mall yet. I want Chopping to. It looks. Also, I don't think I'd actually call this horror, but Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. Oh, it's a great movie. Yeah. We are on day 18. No, 19. Day 19. Uh, favorite Tales from the Crypt episode. Yes. It's one of the first ones I ever watched, and it's my favorite. Um, season 5, episode 1, Death of Some Salesman, <laughs> which is, yeah, it's a great title. Um, it's this salesman. He's, like, conning people out of, like, their, their savings um, by selling them, like, a plot of land in, like, a funeral or in a, in a cemetery that, like, they'll never get. And then he goes to this house where mama, papa, and little daughter, not little, but whatever, are all played by Tim Curry. Oh, yeah. okay. I am familiar with this. They play like a white, trashy, farm redneck family. Yeah. Um, and Tim Curry is just like the Tim Curryist uh, for all three parts because he plays like the daughter as well. Sure, sure. Um, it's fantastic. <laughs> I haven't seen all of the episodes yet, but I've watched a good amount of Tales from the Crypt. Oh, uh, that, that's all I got for, for, for 19. Uh, see, I, I, I'm not too familiar with the actual canon of the show, but the like the first thing that jumps to my mind is like the most memorable thing that I've seen is Bordello of Blood, just the the film. Yeah, I, I watched it with a bunch of friends, like a couple, like pre-pandemic, and yeah. we yeah, it, it's immensely enjoyable. Um, There's a lot of good episodes. There's a lot of like okay episodes, too. Yeah. Um, what do we have here? A favorite Halloween song. Yes. Uh, so I tried to find, I think it's called like the hearse song. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I think, I think Matt's referring to us rambling for an hour about horror stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm yeah. glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, me too. Um, Excellent. There was like the bones go or the worms go in, the worms go out, the worm blah, 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 blah. Okay. I, I know the one you're talking about. I think it was the, what's maybe, what's the thing before first grade? Kindergarten? Kindergarten. Preschool? Yeah. Kindergarten, preschool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, I was, I was doomed from a young age. Uh, like the last day with our music teacher, like it was a different person came in for that. Sure, sure. She's like, I'll play any of the, the songs that we've played over the last year that you want to listen to. And I was like, that one, <laughs> the Halloween one <laughs> with worms that d digest dead people. And she's like, okay. <laughs> uh, I said any, uh, I opened the door to this. Yeah. Uh, oh God, I need to find, and I try to find like the original one, but I can't. Uh, anyway, there's also uh, every day is Halloween by ministry. Okay. Great. Um, and then I, this is so cheesy, but I love it. Uh, 999 Happy Haunts by the Happy Haunts. It's the the Disney <laughs> um, Haunted Mansion yeah. song from, I'm going to guess, like, early 60s. Would Probably, guess. yeah. And every year, like, Belinda and I will start putting up our Halloween village with, like, a mixture of Halloween songs will come on. And that one will come on. And she'll get maybe, like, three minutes into it. And she's like, is this ever going to end? Because it's, like, the same thing for, like, ten <laughs> minutes. And I'm like, no, you can change it. Oh, <laughs> it's it's very long. I, I don't think I have an answer for this one. Those those aren't my so much my favorite as the two I remember. I mean, they're both. I like them a lot. But. Uh, favorite cameo in a horror movie. This one was hard, too. Not because I I know the answer, but it, it this one could have been the answer for like six different categories. <laughs> um, scream. Oh, sure. There's. There's a scene where um, I think it's the Fonz is their principal. Uh, Henry, Henry Winkler. Henry yeah. Winkler. And he's like, which of these people is the killer? Blah, 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 blah. And he like looks into the hallway of the school and there's a janitor mopping. Uh -huh. But it's Wes Craven dresses Freddy Krueger with like this long hair and like weird mustache. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, but like Sc Scream is one of the movies I watch like every Halloween. It's a solid. A it's a it. solid movie, and the sequels aren't bad, especially for like horror movie sequels. Like, I, I, I don't remember the sequels very well. They're they're scream movies. Scream movies. Yeah, that's fair.
Favorite horror anthology movie. Oh, wait, first. Oh, we got a, couple. Oh, a lot of people associate thriller with Halloween. Um, that's true. Yeah, I think the whole zombie video uh, kind of helps lend itself to that. Um, I mean, it's the whole general vibe of the song. It's got, you know, it's got that spooky. It's the Vincent Price bit, too. Yeah. I think that, yeah, that kind of locks it in. Um, in. In Elvira's book, which just finished, I want to say, so... Sh- Michael Jackson was thinking about asking her to do the Vincent Price part. Intro. Really? Yeah. And hmm. someone in his, in like the chain of command absolutely was like, absolutely not Elvira. It's weird. There's like two people in the book that just hate her for no apparent reason. That's wild. And, and one of them, who's the guy in charge of Saturday Night Live? Lorne Michaels. Yeah. Lorne Michaels yeah. has it out for, real? yeah. Really? She was, he didn't want her on the show to guess. And this was when she was like at the, top of her at the top of her game yeah and his boss made him and he <laughs> just slowly whittled away her her part in the episode uh-huh it was just like a complete douche to her what an asshole yeah <laughs> yeah Ugh. um so we got a couple suggestions on favorite halloween song um aaron mentioned the monster mash classic always good and then we have matt uh king diamond by halloween or is it halloween by king diamond I don't know. Uh, and Halloween. Halloween. Oh, fucking Halloween. <laughs> Is Halloween the name of the song? Or the Halloween's the name of a band, if okay, I'm not okay. mistaken. Uh, yeah, I, I remember seeing some of their stuff pop up for sale whenever I worked at Hot Topic back in the day. Um, and then Aaron said, God damn it, uh, Bill Murray's oh, cameo. Bill Murray's cameo in it's, Zombie Land. <laughs> it's fantastic. And here's why I didn't go with it, because I thought about that one. One, I love that cameo. <laughs> with Chris, Chris Craven, it's it is absolutely my actual favorite. Oh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's it's great. It's a cameo, whereas Bill Murray's scene in Zombieland it's lasts more ri- too it, long to be a cameo. Yeah, like, it's more. Like, of, I mean, I mean, they kind of they actually like wrote that in as like a significant part in that yeah. moment in those moments. Um, though they weren't sure if he was actually going to show up really? <laughs> until like the day of, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like that's probably how it is with Bill Murray on any movie. At yeah. This point. Um, day twenty two. 22. Um, yeah. For, uh, favorite horror anthology movie. Yes. I I love both creep shows. I thought you were going to say creep show, but, but, but there's a but. Okay. I like specific segments. Okay. Of the creep show. Like the, the first one, the Stephen King one is, it's like eight minutes long and I love it. And I just watch oh, it over yeah. and over again. No, it's fantastic. Um, and then there's the last one where the uh, germaphobe. Oh, is, yeah. Isn't the first one. That, it's, it's really gross, but also really good. Uh, and then in the second one, there's it's called the raft. I think Stephen King wrote that. Segment. I think he did. Yeah, I think I think you're right about that. And it's a bunch of kids like playing on some kind of like wooden raft thing, and there's like a goop. Fl- it's and like the effects were really good. Uh, but I went with um, 2007's Trick or Treat. Oh, okay. Which is. Um, did we did we watch that? I I don't I'm not sure. I watched it pretty regularly. I know I watched it with Scott while we were camping because I'm like, this is this just is scary enough that it won't freak anybody out. Uh-huh. But um, it's centers around Sam the trick or treater. Yeah. No. We yeah we we definitely like, did I, watch this. Oh, did we? Yeah. I God, I love that movie. Um, but like all of the segments interconnect with each other. Yeah. And I like, really there, like that, there's some cause and effect going on with yes. throughout throughout all of yes. them. Yes. Uh, like you see the one person's like burying somebody in their backyard yep. and then you see the other side of the fence and it's like Brian Cox is like, keep your dog out of my yard. Yep. <laughs> um, this is, that's what I'm like. I wish, I wish they would make a sequel. Yeah. Matt, Matt just said the same thing. Trick or treat. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. No, I, I would, I would agree with that. It's, that's solid. Yeah. The frame, frame, frame the framing narrative. Is yeah. So good. Not framing device, but like the framing narrative. Yeah. Oh man. I, I, I need more Brian Cox in my life. I think he was the original Hannibal Lecter as well. I think, really? I think he was Hannibal Lecter in the first Manhunt. Manhunter? Manhunter. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I was completely unaware of that. I mean, you have Anthony Hopkins coming in after that. Like, it's, I mean, it's, sure. It's really, I mean, and they yeah. also like beefed up his part too, which is nice. Yeah. Um, all right. Favorite horror movie based on true events? <laughs> <laughs> uh this might not be my favorite, but it's one I I have to bring up anytime I can. 
um, 1986's Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Oh, yeah. This is Michael Rooker, right? Yeah. 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 Ooh. Uh, the movie is hard to watch. And then you learn it's, if you didn't already know, you learn it's based on a true story mm-hmm. about um, Henry Lee Lucas. It's loosely, very loosely based. Sure. Um, on Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Tool, Otol, something like that. It's uh, it's yeah. like one of the very few like serial killer partners. Normally they're they're pretty solo, but Henry Lee Lucas is like one. I like when I'm reading about it, I feel dirty, like icky, like I just want to shower afterwards. Like yeah. it is disgusting. Um, and then the movie is also has a, like a very raw feel to it. The girl, oh, next, the girl next door. door. Ooh. Um, I have not. I can't remember if I've seen that or seen not. the movie. I've read the book, and okay. the book is very hard. It's very good. It's one of the best books I've ever read, mm-hmm. but it is incredibly hard to get through. Um, and it is, it's one that I, I, I had heard the true, the true story part of it like years ago. Yeah. And then like, as I'm reading the book, I'm like, this sounds familiar and like awful things happening to this girl. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh no, this is true. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, what actually happens but... might be even worse than what's in the book. Oh, yeah, the exorcist. That's true. I always forget that that's based yeah, on Yeah, I, I, I tend to forget about um, that as well. It's just such a, like, such a sensational, like, effects achievement that yeah. I, I tend to forget that, like, oh, yeah, they're, like, that's... It's like a, an iconic film that you... Um, I'm sure there's an off of... Because I think the original incident surrounded a, a boy, not a girl, if I recall. Pr- yeah, I could see that being a change that they would make for the film. And if anybody suggests The Conjuring, I'm punching you in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> uh... The Warrens were awful humans. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, favorite Treehouse of Horror segment. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is right up our fucking oh, alley. God. <laughs> um, this was this is hard because there's so there's many so good ones. There's so many good ones. I, I made like a small. No, that's not even true. I was going to say like I didn't go with any that are spoof, but like that's not even true. Um, this is not my favorite, but it is the one that scared the bejesus out of me as a kid. Okay. Um, the very first Simpson anything that I've ever seen. Um, I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons growing up. And then, like, the one time my dad's like, eh, I watch it. Um, it happens to be this episode with this segment, <laughs> and it scared the fuck out of me. And it's <laughs> it's uh, Treehouse of Horror 4, uh-huh. Terror at Five and a Half Feet, which is the episode where there's a gremlin on the side of the school bus. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's a play on the Twilight Zone yeah, episode. Yeah, which is also is a great episode. Twilight Zone. Yeah. Um, the... <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, like, the TV was turned on, it was in the middle of the episode, I didn't have any, like, this is a special horror thing, I just see this gremlin on the side of the bus, and no one's listening, like, no one believes Bart, mm-hmm. and then the gremlin, like, holds up Flanders' head, Yeah, I was scared the, I I could not go to sleep <laughs> until, like, my mom got home, I was like, it's okay, I'm like, okay, mom. Um, oh my god, yeah. There- there are so many good mm-hmm. ones though. Like I like, like it was just like jumping to my mind. Like you see, like, you mentioned Flanders, and I yeah. immediately go to the uh, like the where Flanders takes over the world, and uh, oh, and, the, yes. and the Simpsons have yeah. to be sent to the reeducation center. There's also the one where he does. It's like the spoof of like I I know what you did last summer. Uh huh. Um, where he's actually also a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> there's the the spoof of the sh- the shinning the shinning is great uh, are you trying to get sued <laughs> speaking of willie there's the nightmare on elm street one oh, where he's like man. a li- lawnmower or something <laughs> yeah he possesses a lawnmower oh in one of the dreams but you know i just love the scene where he like he he walks into the pta meeting yes. on fire and they're like hold on willie and he, he like, just sits on the sits floor. down on a chair <laughs> next to the door just burning a lot oh man i <laughs> They haven't done a good one in a while, but I I always watch it. I mean, you know, there's there are a lot of people who argue the Simpsons should have been canceled a long time ago. Um, have I seen the Omega Omega the Man? Omega Man? Um, I'm familiar with the reference. I don't know if I've seen. Is that is that the 3D one? Is that the one where he goes through the portal and becomes 3D? I can't remember. Um, the, the titles are like what don't stick in my head for whatever right. reason. Like it's a play on the Omega Man, which well, is yeah. um, clown without pity. <laughs> That's also a really good one. That's the <laughs> one he gets from, like, the... He gets the Krusty doll. Oh, yeah. Oh, someone shop. switched this to evil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I see what you got here. <laughs> um, he's like, you also get the free Gogurt. Yogurt. Whatever. Fro- Frogurt. But it's evil. <laughs> um, I'm not good with my Simpsons. But it's cursed. But it's cursed. <laughs> That's bad. 
Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's post-apocalypse. Okay, I do remember that one. I mean, maybe I missed that one. That was, I think it was a little later, but it, yeah. But yeah, it, I haven't watched all the later ones. I mean, not like super later. It's not like season 30 later. Oh, okay. Um, I think I remember enjoying that one. I I, I have to watch more of these. We'll, we'll watch that after we play that song by the Screamo Emo <laughs> band and then Warren Zebon. Um, have a hell of an evening ahead of us. Uh <laughs> We're almost there. 25. Day 25. Day 25. Favorite Wes Craven. Um, this was the, this was the one that fucked me because it's, it's Scream. But, I but used you've already Scream. used Scream. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I went with Nightmare on Elm Street. Because uh, you have not used that yet. Because I've not used that yet. And like, I haven't watched all of Wes Craven's films, but I watched a good Same. number. Yeah. I, I've definitely not seen all of them. I haven't even seen all the Freddies. It's just, there's. That was one of the, that was my franchise pick a year or two ago. So I went through and watched all of them. Um, Even the Jackie Earl Haley one? I had watched that years ago, so I didn't have to oh, watch okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't. Yeah, I've got nothing else to say to that. I, I do all still right. need to watch The Last House on the Left, but I knowing yeah. knowing what it's about, I don't imagine it's going to. I'm going to enjoy it more than Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, favorite Halloween candy. Oh. Taking taking a pivot here. Yes. Um, I tried to find the name of this. Cannot find the name of it. But it's those little chocolate coins. They're like, um, they have like the rice cr- cr- crunchies in them, kind of yeah. like crunch, but they're just like little foil covered. Like gelt? Mm. I don't know. There's, I think a couple of companies make them, but it's yeah. just like a chocolate coin with like a Halloween character on the foil and uh, they're crunchy and I love them. Yeah. Um, it's it's definitely like mm, nostalgia. I'm sure. I'm enjoying this taste. Um, yeah. There is something about those that is just, just. Yeah, the people under stairs is also another re- really good Wes Craven. Um, I've never seen that. <laughs> so you've seen Twin Peaks, right? Oh yeah. Um, God, what the fuck are the, what are the names? You know, uh, I think Earl. Um, there's like the Earl and Nadine. Oh yeah. Uh, I think that that's their names. They are also a couple in the People Under the Stairs. No fucking shit. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And there's I don't think it's spoiling anything, but um. The dude, whose name I can't remember, at one point he's running it around. The, the premise is that like they they own an enormous mansion with like a bunch of like hidey hole places, and they keep children in the basement. Um, and like one of them like runs throughout the house. Um, what anyway? Anyway, he's running around, and I don't even know if there is a reason for it, but it's like a full gimp suit oh! with a shotgun. Oh no, I do know do this <laughs> movie. Okay, I've not actually seen it. Again, that fucking channel scaredy yeah. cats I mentioned oh, okay. did a whole okay. video about this, and like, no, this movie is bonkers. It's pretty bonkers. Yeah, no, it looks fun as hell. Yeah. I I need to. Wa- I absolutely need to watch yeah. that. No, as soon for some as soon as you mentioned the kid getting loose in the house, like, wait, yeah. something about this sounds familiar. And then you said gimp suit, and I was like, that's it. It doesn't I, feel like a Wes Craven film to me, but it's still I like had no fucking idea it was Wes Craven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, Halloween candy I fucking hate. Whoppers. Sixlets. Palmer's chocolate coins is, uh, is oh, okay. what Matt says. Okay. You're, I think you're, you're right. Because yeah. I remember the P being that there's... the stylized P. Man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think you're right. Yeah. That. Yeah. Oh man, I haven't thought about those in so long. And now I'm gonna order so, so many, many Palmer's chocolate coins. Oh my god, I'm I'm really torn on what my favorite Halloween candy would be because like I'm like I'm a sucker for mm-hmm. a Reese's cup and that's like I mean oh, but, yeah, yeah. but that's like yeah. that's like the that, that is like the the most basic answer you can give like of course you I was like trying Reese's to think of something that, if you're like, not allergic I only really eat it around Halloween or or I'm I'm gonna make a controversial statement here is candy corn oh, I actually like candy <laughs> corn. <laughs> Uh, every year I try. I I when I was when I was a kid, I I saw that Lewis Black bit where he talks about how all the candy corn in the world was made in 1903, and I was just like, <laughs> yeah. "Shut up! I like candy corn." <laughs> and I I always try like one of the candy corns, and then one of the candy corn pumpkins. I'm like, maybe this will taste a lot better. And not... I mean, the pumpkins are pretty good, but I mean, the the, the actual <laughs> the actual corn though, I actually, yeah, I, uh, um, that's all you, man. But you, I do like fruitcake, so. I, I'll take the Christmas hit. I, you know, I've, I don't think I've ever actually had a fruit cake. It's it's really bad for you. That's one of the, really, oh, I mean, really I mean, you. from what I've seen of them, they look terrible for yeah. you. Yeah, like they they look like a heart attack waiting to happen. But but yeah, my family never made those. That's fair, they yeah. uh, they never they they were never present at any of my family gatherings on either side. They're not cheap either. 
That's what I've heard. Like, they're expensive as fuck. It's like, why are these so bad I think and so ubiquitous? You ever watch this? This relates, I swear. You ever watch, like, uh, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares or whatever the fuck it is? Oh, sure, yeah. Where he goes into a restaurant and he's like, all right, we're going to jack up the prices of everything uh-huh. so that people think that it's fancy. Oh, I think God. I think the fruitcake company started that is trying to, like, well, if we make it, like, 10 bucks for a fruitcake, then people will think it's fancy food. <laughs> Didn't work, guys. Just just me having to pay more. Um Aaron's saying that he doesn't associate any candy with Halloween besides candy corn. That's, that's true. Yeah, I will I point of... out, I did mention earlier, I have a terrible taste. <laughs> so, like. I can't think of any other candy that I'm like, you only really see that. I mean, there's like the monster cereal that you only see around Halloween. But that's not like candy. Um, oh, it, it, you know, it's candy. It's breakfast candy. N- I, you're absolutely right. It is. Remember, it we is. just had two. <laughs> I, I, like, I just had two oh, bowls yeah. of it while we watched Troll 2 the it's other day. And Chocula, I, right? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's very, very it, sweet. I felt so sick afterward because I had had so much breakfast cereal that day, considering that one of the bowls I had at home was Reese's Puffs, and I had two bowls oh of the God. goddamn Count Chocula. <laughs> just... This next one I'm ashamed of. Next, uh, This next one? Okay, next next day. Uh, favorite foreign horror? I don't have one. I've watched a lot of foreign horror, but like... I, I haven't. I've watched a lot of Italian and Japanese, and... There are parts of them that I like a lot. Mm-hmm. There are scenes. Um, I just watched Pulse last night, which is a Japanese horror film. Not familiar. Um, and I really enjoyed it, but I'm like, meh. Um, so I I definitely cheated. I cheated hard because oh. I picked two Canadian films. <laughs> That's foreign. It's it counts. Yeah, yeah. So I went with, and I I they're both ones I just watched this year. Uh, Black Christmas, which is 1974. Okay. It's Margaret Kidder, I think. I have heard, I've heard very good things about that I movie. I very much enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and then My Bloody Valentine from 1981, oh, which is... Oh, okay. Um, it, it takes place in like a coal mine area, a coal mine town. Very uh, cool. And like a haunted coal miner. Dude, it's it's pretty enjoyable. And it's it's takes place around Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I definitely need to watch more... Um, horror, foreign horn films, especially like I've, I've watched some scary Korean films that aren't quite horror, but I feel like just knowing that vibe, I would I would dig it. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's move on to we have we have four left. Uh, favorite slasher movie? Yes. Um, this was uh, again it's Scream, but uh, <laughs> since I already used that, um. And it is one of my favorite horror movies. It just doesn't quite fit for me. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, the original? Yeah. Yeah. It. I get. Yeah, it's slasher, but... Ma- I, I think it definitely fits in there. Like, 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 like uh, Leatherface absolutely fits into that oeuvre of, like, yeah. you know, Freddy and Jason and Michael Myers type, you know, murderous yeah. character, lumbering character. The sequels things. especially are very slashery. Oh, yeah. They, they, they get... They fall more into yeah. those trappings as the series goes on, I think. And Matt and I talked about this, how, like, the the, the genre, like, the subgenre that really gets to me is, like, backwoods horror. Um, yeah. So, like, because I live in Pennsylvania, I live in the middle of nowhere Pennsylvania before, um, it's very... I, it, it seemed plausible that, like, a crazy man could come out of the woods and, like, do shit. Sure. Um, this is more like crazy Texas man, you know. <laughs> but uh, it, it felt very real, like, oh, this... Oh, uh, Matt's got some suggestions for backwoods horror as well. Yeah. Backwoods slashers. The, the backwoods stuff gets me. There is something about it that I think, just uh, having grown up in this area, like, yeah. it just, like, you know, like, you have know people I've who have... I've definitely, like, stopped at a gas station, and I'm like, I don't want to be in here at night alone with you. I went to a gas station one. Uh, you can ask, like, my, my sister will, will, will remember this story. I, I went to a, a gas station in Fayette County once, <laughs> and I walk in, and there are these two people behind the counter just staring at me. I think I went in to uh-huh. buy a pack of cigarettes and pay for, uh, and, and pay for gas with cash and they're just staring a hole through me they yeah. both looked did you look just, like one of them liberals i mean probably i mean yeah <laughs> um but like, like they're like they're staring at me with just like this leathered skin uh-huh. this greasy just just this filthy look about them and there's something smoking behind the counter well, i nice. did not get an eye on what but they're looking at me like I shouldn't be there, so I just paid and left. Yep. And uh, this this is vaguely um, 
Matt rec recommended a couple of Backwoods Horror. Uh, we got Prey, Madman, and The Final Terror, which are all three that I've heard of. I, I've not. I think um, I may have heard of Prey. Prey I, does sound a little familiar. I do want to check those out though, because like yeah. most horror films don't actually scare me, but like Backwoods stuff, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we were shooting American Curse, yeah, out on the east side of the state, out in the Poconos, out in the Poconos, we stopped. Uh, you, I don't know. You may, you may have been with us. I can't remember. That entire production is a blur. It really is. <laughs> um, we stopped at like a middle of nowhere gas station. Had, didn't have quite the same experience you did, but it was definitely like. Was this when we were out looking for Lucky Strikes? Maybe. This sounds vaguely maybe. familiar. I don't think so. Because I remember if this was like on the way home. Because we picked up some. Oh, if it was on the way home, then no. Because I was we, I was in a separate car with Matt. They had a collection of old horror, old Italian horror films. It was like, you have your normal couple of DVDs. That you're yeah. like, uh, no one needs Top Gun again. Yeah. But then you had, it was like Grave Disturbances. Um, there's a couple other ones. I'm like, why are these old Italian horror films in this middle of nowhere gas station? That's wild. Carries like three brands of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, cool, cool. All right. Next question. Underappreciated horror movie. Um, I have two recommendations. Well, I have two. One, because I wouldn't recommend it for people to watch, but I love it. And one that people should watch is underappreciated. Uh, the first one is from 1967, and it's called uh, Spider Baby, or The Maddest Story Ever Told. <laughs> and it is, it's very like Grindhouse, uh, the the effects are cheesy as hell, but the the atmosphere of it, it's black and white, the The atmosphere of it is is fantastic. Um, it has Lon Chaney, I think Junior, right? Um, is, is, he plays like the chauffeur, and he's like trying to keep this clan of very rich people in this haunted house alive and functioning sure because they've like d devolved so much um very enjoyable uh oh oh and um oh shit what's his name captain spaulding um oh man sid um, haig sid haig yeah yeah he rest plays in peace yeah rest in peace bud um he's one of the children that's like devolved really <laughs> yeah oh shit. yeah he's great he's very young in it um and then what a great horror actor yeah jesus christ uh and then the second one is lord of illusions which i think we talked about a little bit when we were doing our clive barker stuff maybe yeah this does sound vaguely familiar it's uh it's his other so he has like two characters that he uses a lot there's like the hellraiser characters that everybody knows and then there's like a, a detective right um, yeah and in the movie it's he's played by scott bacula who's Great. I love him. Sure. Um, probably not appropriately cast for this role because you're supposed to be like a moody noir, like nihilist. And Scott Bakula is not. not yeah. quite... No, that doesn't quite fit. Um, but but he's investigating this clan of, of magicians who are fucking around with the occult. Uh, Matt's saying uh, children shouldn't play with dead things. I've not heard of that one. I've not either. Um, I will check that out. It's a hell of a title. Um. The the effects in Lord of Illusions actually like, they're practical effects the the computer effect but the um I mean it's bleak because it's Clive Barker yeah with Scott Bakula dealing with like fucking wizards <laughs> um sure really good uh, Matt also suggests the faculty which I I have I have heard seen of the faculty of, it's Robert Rodriguez I want to say yeah I think so um I do need to see that one that one keeps on it's like on my list every Halloween I just never get to watch it um. Favorite horror movie of all time is like it much like the thing and seven it. I like it so much. It kind of surpasses genre, <laughs> but I suppose you would definitely just describe the shining as horror. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Like it is again. You're like, talking about the Kubrick's. Yeah. Shining. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. The, the, the one, that, the one, that, the, uh, the, the one that King hates. Yes. The one that, that Stephen King disowned, um, which I just saw this thing the other day where like, Kubrick subtly killed off Stephen King in the movie. Did you see this? I remember hearing something about that. Um, there's like a car accident on the Sidewinder that rode up to the Overlook Hotel. Yeah. And the, the the car that's crushed was the exact same model as Stephen King's. It was like a red Volkswagen Beetle. Jesus. It's like crushed by a, a tractor trailer. <laughs> and I, I'm like, Kubrick. <laughs> Stan. 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 Buddy. Chill the fuck out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He had no chill in that movie. No, um, he's never had any chill ever. 
Are you no. kidding me? <laughs> Have you watched the like 20, 25 minute mini doc that his daughter did? No. It's amazing. Um, I think Vivian is her name. Okay. Uh, she, was, she was super young. She was on set. And she, so she was given like, you can walk wherever you want. So she like talks to Jack Nicholson and, um, oh my God, my, my, Shelly Duvall. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I, I think Scatman Crothers is the dude. Hell yeah. And like Jack Nicholson, it's interesting to see him kind of just be like an actorly actor. Cause he's like, just, Hey, I just ate some lamb and then I'm going to brush my teeth. Cause nobody wants me to breathe food in their face while I'm acting. I'm like, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good, good man. Good you, on you. <laughs> um, and then Shelly Duvall is just like, fucking mess and Scatman Crothers is just like talking about how magical everything is but he's like kind of crying while he's doing it I'm yeah like, that's so weird that's wild um, yeah it's it's worth a watch I'll have to check that out yeah it doesn't make the movie any less magical it kind of makes it even kind of a little bit more scary nice um, do you have a favorite horror movie oh god that's a tough one um, it might you know it might be Night of the Living Dead yeah. I think it might uh, that that's way really fucking good. up there for me. It's just so it's so fucking good. The entire like the the oh. have you been up to the cemetery? No. Yeah. Fuck. What's what town is that? It's a, another. It's like another little small town. Mm. Um, they used to. They might still, but they used to have like a a festival up there. Um, yeah. And we found the cemetery, and we like found the. I'm sure that I'm, I apologize to the family. But like I, we found like the the headstone where like, yep. like we're coming to get you, Bob. Bro. Yes, <laughs> uh, it was super cool. Uh, the farmhouse is no longer there, which is kind of a bummer. But Matt's saying is his favorite is Halloween, which I al- I almost said that oh, too. Honestly, Halloween. I mean, Halloween saw the original Halloween is really good. That brings us to our last question. The last question: What is your favorite thing to watch on Halloween? So. I normally put this on in the background while, I, while I'm like at a Halloween party mm-hmm. and sometimes it's not great because people have different sensibilities, but I love to put on the original Evil Dead from 1981. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the way it looks. I can just kind of like look behind me and I'm like, ah, yeah, that part, that's great. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, but there's the infamous, um, there's the infamous tree branch. Oh yeah. Scene. Yeah. No, I'm I'm aware. <laughs> Uh, which I I did this in college. It was like I think my sophomore year, and I invited all the theater people, and there's some like very, uh, especially like sexually conservative people. Yeah, that came and and I remember like looking over and like seeing them on the couch, and then looking at the TV, <laughs> and like oh no, and they're just like kind of like huddling in. I'm like I didn't mean anybody to actually watch this. <laughs> Uh, no, you're getting way too into it. Stop. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're both like no, 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 no. no talk no. about something else. Talk about something else. <laughs> Uh, God, I love that movie. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, oh, yeah, I would oh, say, yeah, yeah. um, I think more and more I've been shifting away from watching like actual horror mm-hmm. movies on Halloween. I, I think the, the uh, Santa Claus, the, <laughs> Tim Allen's the Santa Claus. No, um, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I think I, I've actually really taken to within the past like year or so, uh, um, uh, over the garden wall. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just it's like phenomenal. Super like, like it's super appropriate for the time of year. It's like comforting and it's it's wholesome and delightful. Yeah. Like, it's such and creepy as hell at a number of points. Like oh, yeah. oh my god, yeah, that like, fucking beast is pumpkin pumpkin carving a pumpkin. Like, yeah. Oh my head. god. Yeah, that was unnerving. <laughs> Holy oh, shit. So good. But, um, yeah, that's just yeah. I just read the other day that. The when they originally released the portions of I think it was like fifteen minute pieces, they released they animated the moon with the release date phase of the moon. That excellent. <laughs> it, it is so detailed. Uh, if if you've not seen Over the Garden Wall, like watch, watch it, watch it. it. It's, it's beautiful. A quick watch like like the episodes are sh- fairly short. They're like fifteen minutes or so. I, I think it might be. Either under an hour or like just over an hour long total, total. For, like, for the yeah. entire yeah. series. Yeah, like it is. It's it is a mini series for sure. It is. It, it's just so well put together, and it's it's cute. But as Matt, Matt's saying, it's it's beautiful Distur- and disturbing. Yeah. Disturbing Absolutely. and beautiful is a very um, apt description. Uh, and the voice cast is great too. What uh, it's fucking, Elijah Wood? Uh, is... Elijah Wood. I think I think Christopher Lloyd's in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, it's beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. 
And every once in a great while, I'll get there's a song, uh, mashed potatoes and molasses. Potatoes and molasses, stuck, yeah. yeah. It's just like stuck in my head <laughs> yeah, at work. That and just I was like, pops into my head now and then. And yeah, I, I don't work with food, and it just happens to me. <laughs> yeah, it's like playing with the mashed potatoes behind the lane or the, the line. Not the lane. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is. It is a throwback animation style. Is it? 1930s, 1930s, yeah. Um, so that does it for our mi- less than many <laughs> yeah, this conversations. Turned, yeah, this, t- this turned into a lot more than we than we expected it to be. But with thirty one days worth of shit and yeah, the way we and the way yeah. we banter on about things, just our yeah. full length Halloween, <laughs> our full length Halloween bonus episode. Yeah, uh, thank you guys for for talking, um, commenting. It, it it added a lot, and I thank you for the movie yeah. recommendations. I got a lot. Yeah, for real. Like I've you, like Matt, you Matt uh, and Aaron, you guys added so much yeah. to my watch list. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Thank you for uh, watching and for listening. Those of you who uh, who tune in later, and uh, yeah, just be sure to uh, like and subscribe to the uh, to the show on various uh, various platforms. Whether you're on the YouTube or the Spotify or Apple or whatever, wherever the hell you're listening to this. Uh, um we're we're slowly building an audience yeah uh it's just pretty sweet yeah it's 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 been exciting so far it's it, we've, we've definitely been getting some good traction with uh with uh some of the latest episodes well for frame of reference we're recording this just a week like not even a week after the last airbender mm-hmm. episode has come out and it like it's been getting a lot of attention it's yeah, so uh, please uh, rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts share it with and your friends. Podchaser or wherever else you can review. Share it with your friends. Uh, share it with your family, your coworkers, whoever you think would be interested in this. Just please, yeah, please keep spreading the word. We are we are thrilled with how many people are into it and all the feedback we've been getting has been great. Uh, and we hope you enjoy uh, what's to come. And uh, we didn't plan a closer because this wasn't supposed to be a full episodes. Yeah, I know. But uh, <laughs> uh, enjoy the. Halloweens and come back because we're sure to razzle dazzle you. Oh, God, I have to pee. <laughs>